Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by an Irish director, award-winning documentary producer. You might have seen his first feature, A Doctor's Sword, on a trained Irish doctor who survived the atomic bomb in Nagasaki. His latest film talks about the unofficial Cuban Civil War. We welcome director Gary Lennon. Thank you, Sean. Nice to meet you. Gary, let's go beyond the mic. You're a storyteller. You've told Piano Dreams and A Doctor's Sword. Why was Castro's spies needed to be told? I grew up in the 1980s, and and I grew up the son of someone who loved Cold War espionage, the story of spies. And I think the story of a spy is just intrinsically interesting. I think their lives are so different to our lives. Um, You know, a bad day for me is bad Wi-Fi. But for a spy, they have literally each day is potentially life and death. So I think it's a very attractive you know, starting point as a filmmaker. Uh, my ambition with this was to make a really entertaining spy and espionage film. So that was my starting point. So you had unrestricted access to the Cuban Film Institute's archives. How did this access help you or maybe hinder you? Um, I don't think it hindered, me, hindered us at all. Um, we built up a relationship with different people in Cuba over a number of years. And at the very end, we were able to get access to the Cuban Film Institute's archive. That allowed us to use archives that hadn't been seen before, uh, such as Fidel Castro entering Havana in in color. That's never been seen on a screen before, even in in Cuba. Wow. Um, And to be honest, it was also just a lot of fun as a filmmaker going through this archives. It's uh, Cuba is unlike anywhere else in the world. It's like it's trapped in time in many respects. You've got the the American cars from the 50s uh, and the 60s, and you've got this very old world kind of almost jungle book look to the city where with buildings that are that are in need of repair. So, you know, it was wonderful. It was it was as a storyteller, you love having as much materials as you can. And we were incredibly appreciative that we got so much from them. As you started to review the facts from both sides of the Straits of Florida, what did you discover? Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, people have asked us, was it was it difficult to get people to tell their stories and their positions? And from our perspective, that wasn't the case at all. You know, we didn't have to use any tricks or any sleight of hand to, to get the spies or the people in Miami to tell their, their stories because both stories are very much out in the open. You know, both sides are very open about what they've done. You know, both sides admit doing it. So there's no, you know, what happened is not up for debate. The only issue up for debate is, is the justification for it. And it, that, that comes back to your politics. I think if you're a Cuban who lives in Cuba and supports the Cuban government, you will support the Cuban Five, you know, these, these spies that operated in, in Miami. And then if you are in exile, living in Florida, um, who are anti the Cuban regime, you will feel that any of your actions are justified. So, you know, that, that's, that was kind of quite interesting to see that. Um, often when, you, when documentary makers make films you know, with spies, it's things like Edward Snowden, you know, someone who's turned sides and what happened with this is that no one on our, in our film has turned sides. You know, we, they, the, the Cuban Five finished by saying if we had to do it, we'd do it again. And similarly, you know, our leading antagonist to them, Jose Basulto, he would absolutely go into Cuba again. Uh, similarly, the, the people in, in the American Justice and uh, Policing Administration, they feel that what they did was right as well. So I think we, we've tried to present it in a... In a in a neutral sense, we, we, we didn't come at this with any bias, and we kind of let the audience make up their own mind. Gary, which of the Cuban Five had the story you didn't think you'd follow, but as you unraveled it, it had the most intrigue? Yeah, I, I think, I think um, one of the more interesting stories was, was Rene Gonzalez. Rene was born in Chicago, and then he moved back to, to Cuba after the revolution. Um, uh, he worked. He was in Angola as a volunteer fighting the South African apartheid regime, um, and then he became a spy. But he was also a trained pilot. So it's kind of a fascinating story to hear someone leave his family, steal a plane from the Cuban Air Force, and fake a defection. And and from that, his story uh, opens up a lot more. So I think Rene's story is is a particularly interesting one. Although I think each each of them has something very interesting. Castro Spies director Gary Lennon joins us beyond the mic, and it's time for the Rocky Nade. Eight random questions answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. Typical breakfast for you. Eggs at the weekend, porridge during the week. Who was your favorite movie director growing up? Scorsese. So who's your favorite movie director now? Scorsese. (laughs) 
<laughs> Sometimes they change. You've been to Shanghai, Ireland, Europe, and Cuba for work. Where do you like to go to vacation? Um, California. Class you enjoyed the most at the University College Dublin? Um, Plato. Have to ask you, you're an Irishman, Guinness or Harp? 100% Guinness. Had to make sure. Will Ireland win the Six Nations in 2023? Yeah, I think so. You are on the marketing team to market it, so what's your favorite Smirnoff ice flavor. We, we only have the one over here, so it's, it's, it's the original for me. It's time for One Big Question with director of Castro Spies, Gary Lennon, beyond the mic. Gary, how do you believe history will treat the Cuban Five? I think history will treat them favorably. I think these are the biggest heroes in Cuba outside of the two Castros who were the, the presidents. I think that in a few years... Uh, I, I see a thawing of relations between America and Cuba. And I think, in general, people will, will look back favorably on their actions. You've seen the people, the time capsule that Havana and Cuba is. What's so amazing about it? Yeah, I think when you travel around the world, especially in the West, you know, there's an awful lot of similarities. You know, you see the same restaurants, you see the same chain stores, you see the same people wearing the same clothes. There's this kind of homogenization between our, our cultures nowadays. That's not the case in Cuba. So I think it's just unlike anywhere else in the world. You don't see anywhere else with 1950s Cadillacs and Chevys driving around. You don't have that combination of uh, the architecture and the people. And then also, you know, you've got a real confidence. You know, it's one of the things that I was most surprised at was just how confident that Cubans are and their history has given them that confidence. Gary, what's your next project and where can people find you? Um, My next project is called Piano Dreams and that is being released this summer and that is a story about Chinese piano prodigies and their family as they try and make it into this world. The movie is Castro Spies. We thank director Gary Lennon for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you, Sean. And that, my friends, is a Beyond the Mic Shortcut.